Hi, my name is Manu Ali Khani. I am Dean and Professor at CTOR Academy, and I'd like to welcome you to another session of CTOR channel. Today, we continue the discussion on free object design. You can find more details about this subject in volume two of Mechanotropy book. If you remember from previous session, we talk about indications for free object design. It's a very useful design, especially when we wanted to do a major movement at the start of the treatment. But like any design in mechanic, it has its own limitation. One of the main limitations of free object design is the fact that we do not have full control in all dimensions. We adjust our force in one dimension, but that force in other dimension can produce moments that can change the type of movement in other dimensions that we may like or we may not like. In another word, the plane of movement can change significantly depends on relationship between the line of action of the force and center of resistance in other dimension. Therefore, free object design is not design of choice when we want precise movement. In precise movement, we like to move the tooth in one dimension while control the movement in other dimension. One of the examples of the time that we require precise movement is during the finishing stage, that we want everything to be precisely controlled. Free object design is not a design of choice for finishing a stage. It's mostly design of choice at the start of the treatment. Another limitation of free object design is that when we are designing a bodily movement, especially in horizontal movement, to have a bodily movement, the force need to pass through the center of resistance of the tooth. It's very difficult anatomically, especially when we are applying a horizontal force to design a mechanic that force pass through the center of resistance. These limitations make the free object design not the design of choice, especially when we have bodily movement in horizontal direction. Well, assume we still want to use the free object design, is there any way that we can control the side effects? Yes. Let's look at the example. I want to intrude a molar. I apply a force in buccal surface and in this dimension everything seems reasonable. The force passes through the center of resistance and we assume we're going to have a pure intrusion without any side effects. However, if we turn the image, we notice that force does not pass through the center of resistance in coronal plane. In that regard, a moment appears that can tilt the tooth buccally how we can control this moment. Simultaneous application of two free object design can control the side effects that appear with one free object design. For example, in this molar, if we apply a buccal and lingual force at the same time, the moments that produced by the free object design cancel each other and therefore we will be able to have a pure intrusion. Therefore, any times that you want to control side effect of one free object design, it is a good idea to simultaneously apply two free object design to control your moments. Maybe for individual targets such as single tooth, it looks a little bit excessive, it's too much. How about the big large target, for example, a dental arch? Application of two free object design simultaneously for large object is very useful clinically. Assume we rigidly connect all the teeth of one dental arch together. Now we have one object that we like to move. If we apply a force unilaterally, this object will tilt. Why? Because the line of action of the force does not pass through the center of resistance. A moment will appear that will tilt the object unilaterally. Application of two force simultaneously on both sides of this dental arch will produce moments that cancel each other and therefore you get a pure displacement. Similar to the big 
uh, object like a dental arch if you have a segment that you like to move and you like to apply free object design application of two simultaneous free object design in both sides of these segments can help to control the side effects for example we want to intrude the anterior segments and uh, we apply a free object design uh, to apply a force for intrusion of the segments only in one side if we just apply this force the segment would intrude but it will tilt at the same time because of existence of the moment however if you apply two free object designs simultaneously at both sides of these segments the moment that appear in the system cancel each other and therefore you will get a displacement not rotation or production of the cant now that we know how to control the free object design the next questions that pass through our mind how we can control the type of movement with the free object design the type of movement can be controlled by playing between the relationship between the line of action of the force and the distance from the center of resistance let's have an example i have a posterior segments that are rigidly connected together so they act as a one object and i like to move this object in the space for example i like to apply extrusion force if we apply the extrusion force farther away from the center of resistance we can produce an uncontrolled tipping in another word the anterior part of the segments will come down but the posterior part of the segments will go up slightly on the other hand if i move my force closer to the center of resistance very soon i will see a control tipping in another word that the posterior part of the segment stays stationary while the anterior part of the segment comes down even farther movement when the force passes through the center of resistance you will see that you will have a bodily movement so by controlling the distance between the line of action of the force and the center of resistance we con can control the type of movement this is very important this predictability of the movement can only be seen when you have one object if you connect the teeth with the flexible wire each tooth move separately they are not one object they are multiple objects therefore the movement of the segment become unpredictable while one tooth may respond differently to application of the force based on the line of action and the distance between the center of resistance of that tooth and line of action, the other tooth that is farther may react differently. Therefore, if you are planning to move a segment or hold dental arch and predict the movement or study the movement using free object design, you need to make sure that segment or dental arch is only one object, is rigidly connected to each other. One of the main free object design that uh, we use a lot during the clinic is one couple system. One couple system is a very good example of free object design. You may ask how one couple system can be a free object design when the wire is connecting two teeth together. Is the wire producing a restriction of the movement? In that case, it should not be a free object design. It's actually wire is connecting in one side, one contact point, and in the other side, it has two contact points. The fact that it has only one contact point does not induce any restriction on the movement of both segments. So still both segments can move freely. So one couple system is a good example of free object design. For example, we are using one couple system to operate the molar and we're connecting the wire in one uh, contact point to the segment in the front to apply the proper force and moments. This is a free object design. The extrusion of the molar will not get restricted by this design. I hope you enjoyed this session of Citor channel. Next time, we start to explore the semi-restricted design. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe. And please do not forget to press the like button. Thank you so much.